this talk is going to involve the discussion of, of infield sensors. And uh, we have uh, the new chair of the Ag and Biosystems Engineering Department in UCU that's going to address the subject. Uh, she's originally from, from India. She received her PhD from the University of Illinois. And uh, she's 100% administration, but she does get involved with some research. And uh, this is one of her specialty areas. Uh, you've noticed I haven't mentioned her name. Um, if I do, I'll embarrass her as well as myself. So I'm going to turn the mic over to her, let her uh, introduce herself a little bit more, and then we'll get into the subject of infield crop sensors. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is, it's, uh, it's long and hard to say, but it is Srikala Bajwa. You know, you cannot blame me for my name. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to talk about uh, um, some of the work we are beginning to do at, uh, um, at the North Dakota State University, um, particularly regarding um, crop sensors. I, I know the title there says remote sensing. This is one small area within remote sensing. So I, let me start with the, with the, you know remote sensing. Remote sensing is you know you are looking at a target or a, or a crop field from some distance, not really being in the field, and it became really popular in agriculture maybe 10, 15 years back with you know satellites and new sensors. One of the difficulties in using remote sensing was, although remote sensing shows a um, lot of information about your crop, you know how green your crop is and uh, if there are diseases and pests, but the difficulty in using remote sensing is that, okay, when the, uh, the satellites are not going to pass over your field whenever you want it, maybe every 16 days, every one month, or one week, you know, depending on what satellite you are using. Some of the satellite data are very, very expensive. One shot can cost you $2,500 or $5,000 um, or one pass. Um, and also, it requires a lot of knowledge on how to handle this data. You know, you get an image and what do you do with the image? You need computers and you need to figure out how to make a decision and uh, how to get uh, that information converted into something you can use for variable rate application. So that's one reason why remote sensing didn't become very popular. The crop sensors I am going to talk about, I call them active in-field sensors that kind of gets rid of many of those drawbacks that remote sensing had. Now I call them active sensors. Remote sensing, most of the remote sensing are usually, we call it passive sensing. They are looking at the sunlight reflected from an area. These are called active sensors because they have their own light source. This is one of the, one, one of the um, sensors here and uh, you can see a kind of a red round area that, uh, that generate light. If you talk about the light, the light, there are different colors of light you are, you are familiar with, you know, the rainbow colors. Those are the colors we can see with eyes. And there are also light that you cannot see with your eye, you know, near infrared. So the, these kind of sensors, they use both colors that you can see and, and, uh, and the light that you cannot see. So this use a near infrared wavelength. So it uses a near infrared wavelength and, uh, and a red or a, one of the colors that you can see. And the advantage is that the near infrared, the more, the, cro the better your crop is doing, the, the healthier they are, the more near infrared light is going to reflect back from there. Um, but in, in, in the colors you can see, say, you know, if you have a, a, a good crop, there is no nitrogen problem, it looks greener, right, darker greener. That means, you know, a lot, most of the blue and, uh, and the red are absorbed by that crop and the more green is reflected by the crop or comes back from the crop. So that is what this is using, you know, it, uh, it looks at a ratio between that near infrared wavelength and the red wavelength. So the, the better your crop, you are going to have more near infrared coming out of there and the less red coming out of there. So the particular ratio we use, that is called a vegetation index, a normalized difference vegetation index. So that's, a, that's a typically, you know, this sensor here, it's like a computer or any electronic thing. Or in a, the closest I can say, a solar cell. You know, you have a solar powered, you know, little motors or things like that. A solar cell, it converts light into electricity. That's exactly what it does. It has a, it's a, it has a light source, it sends the light out. And, uh, and measures whatever light comes back into the sensor here and convert that light into electricity and look at you know, how much electricity is generated. 
and it uh, then convert it into an index and compare it to uh, the index for a healthy plant. So, you know, that's kind of the theory, how it works, and I want to go into, there are different kinds of sensors out there. Um, this is one, it's called a um, Green Seeker, and it is made by a company called the N-Tech Industries, based on the research done by um, scientists at, uh, at Oklahoma State University, and it is marketed by Trimple right now. Um, and this is a handheld unit. If you get one of these for variable rate application, it looks a little bit different. This is for people to experiment or scientists like us to go and collect the data manually. But if you buy a system to, go, to use for variable rate application, it will look more, less, more like that. So this is one of the sensors you have. And another one is uh, called Optrix. It is uh, marketed by AgLeader. And the sensor is made by Holland Scientific. Same, same system. It's a very similar system. It's a, they work a little bit differently, but more or less same. Here, you, you know, you, you cannot, there is no display or anything. And that, that has a display where you can see what the index is. Here, um, it, uh, it measures the light that comes back and they send it to a computer. And the computer um, controls how much um, chemical will be applied or how much fertilizer will be applied. So that's one option. And uh, there are two more sensors out there. I kind of listed it here in the board. Um, one is the Topcom Crop Spec. Um, that's not, you know, as far as I understand it, the people who are using here, it's not that popular here. And uh, another one is called the Crop Circle, the bottommost one. That's also made by Holland Scientific. That is a previous version, an earlier version of Optrix here. You know, they're made by the same company. In this area, you know, my colleague John has a list of people who use, um, the, you know, this kind of sensors for variable rate application. That's a four kind of sensors which you can mount behind your sprayer and, and automatically, you know, that's a benefit. It automatically, you don't need to do anything. It automatically changes the rate. The only thing you do, the different sensors have a slightly different mechanism. Um, say if you use a green seeker, you need to have a strip of land that, ha that is not deficient in nitrogen. We call it a well nitrated plot. Okay, so you, if you, you know, usually apply 150 pound nitrogen in that strip, you may apply 200 or, uh, or more nitrogen there to make sure they, that those are, or that plot crops are not nitrogen stress. So then what you do is when you are ready to apply variable rate nitrogen, you drive the, your sensor over that plot. So the sensor look at what is the, the index for that plot. And uh, as, once you keep it as a benchmark, then you can drive over your rest of the field and it make a comparison. You know, say that, that end was your, your nitrogen rich, rich plot. You drive the tractor over, the, now your sensor knows what is the benchmark value for a, for a good crop. And say you're driving your tractor over here, it make a comparison between the values it gets here and then for the nitrogen rich um, plot and uh, make a decision how much nitrogen need to be applied. And uh, the sensors will give you, when you buy, they will give you how it, it works. Um, here is uh, for a green seeker. Um, these lines, you know, thank you. These different lines are indicating the index value for a well nitrated plot. It can vary depending on the, the age of the crop and, uh, and how uh, good your field is. It can vary anywhere from, you know, any positive number up to one, okay, between zero and one. Zero is usually soil, one is, uh, you know, very good crop. So, you know, this, these are values from 0.5 to typically, you know, when you want to apply a second dose of nitrogen, it is between 0.5 and 1. So that is the line representing your well nitrated plot. And then you are, you, are, you know, driving your sprayer in another spot and let's say it reads 0.7. So you, you look at, okay, in this case, say 0.6. You look at your well nitrate plot, say is 0.8. 0.6 here, you go to that point, and that is 0.3 is your multiplication factor. And then you can do, this is a method that you see, then you come here, and for your yield goal, how much nitrogen you want to apply, say you want to apply um, 200 pounds or 150 pounds, say 
in for this quad 150 pounds is what you want for your yield goal so you it is a dryland corn you go on dryland corn line that's 150 pounds per acre rate and if we have that multiplication factor 0.3 there you multiply that 0.3 with whatever number is there 199 so that will give you a number and then you divide by the nitrogen efficiency and uh, Dave France tells me it is 0.6. You divide it by 0.6, that is the amount of nitrogen you need to be applied. So that's how it calculates how much nitrogen needs to be applied. I have, you know, I, though the, the four sensors I mentioned, they all fall in one category. You mount it behind your sprayer and go. I have one more uh, sensors that, uh, that, are being that is being used. That is based on, that's not mounted on a vehicle, that is on, based on your, a cell phone app, a smartphone app, okay? It's by a company called uh, Spectral Vision. You can download their app for $99. It's not 99 cents, $99. Then, <laughs> then you have to, it, it comes as your cell phone bill. Then you have to buy this board for uh, $50. The way it works, you, you hold this board, Lay a leaf over to this uh, pink area, you know, you op open your cell phone with your cell phone ca uh, camera, you take a picture, okay? So that's what is on here, you take a picture with, the, with that uh, leaf overlaid and the, the two uh, disc of colors visible. And then in your cell phone app, it will ask you to identify where is the yellow disc. You say that is my yellow disc, it asks you to identify your green disc, that's your green disc. Then it will ask you where your leaf is, and so you, you click on the leaf. It will do a calculation and tell you how much nitrogen is needed. Okay? So it's based on, these are called Munsell colors. It, it is calibrating um, the color of the, of the leaf against some standard color. Again, you need to know for a well-nitrated field what that value is, and it is taking the difference between that well-nitrated field and the leaf you're looking at. So it gives you an approximate idea of, you know, if you do it in multiple plants, how much nitrogen is needed. So that's, uh, well, yeah, the important thing, if you, um, if you go for this, okay? Um, they, it cost you around, for a six, 60 feet se section, it will cost you around um, $20,000. Um, you typically have four sensors like this, okay, in each sensor covering 15 feet of section, and uh, under the control and the display and everything comes with it. Any, any questions? That's what I have. We haven't tested any of this. I know farmers are using it, and, and we have a sprayer set up in, in Fargo, and we are going to do some, we ran some tests, we don't have the data here yet, but uh, next year we are planning to do some um, some real trial, some variable rate application and comparison of different sensors. You know, with, uh, a lot of studies have been done in Oklahoma on wheat. Wheat, yes. I wonder why uh, they have better success in the uh, variable rate application on wheat than we are likely to have here. I actually, um, I have to, I mean, it's not, uh, they have a better success with the wheat. Actually, a lot more studies are done on corn than wheat, okay? Any crop that is, uh, that is a high nitrogen consuming crop is a likely good, good candidate for variable rate, variable rate application. You know, one of the thing is that uh, um, corn is not as prevalent. Before this ethanol boom, corn was not very prevalent in Arkansas or Oklahoma. By the way, until last year I was in Arkansas. There was a faculty there. So corn is not a big crop there. And the green seeker sensor was developed in Oklahoma, and actually one of the most successful application of that sensor is applying desiccant crop. You know, cotton is a major crop there, and the cotton is a perennial, and you have to kill it, otherwise it wouldn't die towards the end of the season. So applying variable rate, you know, where the crop is green, apply an appropriate rate of desiccant. That was one of the most successful application of green seeker, but I don't think uh, wheat is more successful than corn.